Hello, hello, this is Martin Meyer, uh, and this is a continuation of a Python script development that will allow you to load data from a database inside of Nuke. So in the first part, we had a look at the way we can prepare and lay down all the groundwork. In this part, we will develop the main for loop that will create most of the work in our script. So uh, let's start with this. So one of the many ways to do this would be you know, to bring in the tool sets, essentially reference or load in individual comps, modify them, and then change them based on each data entry. So for that, I need to bring in my tool sets. So I'll add a new path to my variables, which will be the tool sets path. Again, it's relative to the working path. So I'm merging the working path with the in folder and in their tool sets. The next thing in my loop, I would like to do a little bit more uh, housekeeping. So right here, I'll add a few more lines to uh, clear the nuke processes uh, before I start or right after I start a new loop. So every time it starts fresh. Next, we can bring in our tool set. So I'll just load in a tool set right here. So I'm defining the tool set variable, giving it a name. This is my template. And then it will load the toolset, it will join the path, toolset path that I defined here with its toolset name. And that will load up a comp inside of a fresh, clean script. So now let's have a look at the actual comp and the parts that we'll be modifying inside of it. So I'll go to my folder. So as you can see, I'm mimicking the structure that I find in Python. So I'm going to my in, toolsets, template zero. One. So this is the actual template. A little gotcha with tool sets you would like to always get rid of the viewer, but for now I'll keep it so we can have a look at the way it operates. So let's remember the names of the nodes that we would like to modify. First, I would like to modify the background in. The name is background in. I would like to change its path randomly uh, based on and load up randomly any of these background images. The next thing I would like to modify my switch node. So that switch node uh, is responsible for changing the backgrounds. There are three different animations on the background. So a little bit of blurring, a little bit of zooming, a little bit of rotation. Obviously, the compositing part can be as complex, as complex as you need it to be. This is just a example. Next part that I would like to programmatically modify are these two data inputs. So this guy will be loading uh, the name, this one will be loading the age, and then I would like to output it to MOV or JPEG. Uh, in this case, I will be outputting MOV uh, for demonstration purposes. So we'll get uh, variations from 10 different backgrounds and three different variations based on the data from the database. So let's get rid of this and save it out. To make our coding a little easier, I prepared two functions or two definitions that will be processing the data in certain ways. So I'll just add them here. The first one is a list files, which essentially takes in a path and it finds um, any files with given extension. In this case, I'm looking for JPEGs. It searches the directory and then returns the files. The next little handy definition is a definition that changes the slashes in any path that you run through it. So to save a little bit of typing down here, I just prepared these two definitions that are ready to be used. So the next thing that I would like to do here is to add a new variable inside of our loop. That will be uh, the one that will pick the random background for it. So I'll add it to my local loop variables here. Just add this. Uh, so what it does, it creates a new variable and it uses the random module, its choice uh, function from random choice, and then it uses the list file definition, which we just added, and then it gives it the background images path. So what will return is a random image that's coming from the background images list of file. Next, we need to get handles on our nodes that we would like, we would like to modify. So I'll just add them here. Um, and then I'm creating and storing them in variables. So the background in, the background in, file of uh, node, switch is my switch node, data input, my data input one, data input two, 
and then output JPEGs and output MOVs are these two write files. So now that we have our handles, that we can talk to these nodes and find them and identify them easily, we can start changing their properties. So if I, I want to change the background in first and it's file parameter. So if I double click this, you'll see this is the file that I would like to override. So I'm going to build the path here. So I'm setting the value of the file parameter and I'm using my fixed path um, def definition that will flip the slashes. And then I'm feeding it the merge of the background images path and the background footage. The background images path is our global variable that is uh, relative to the work path right here. So it's in, in background images, there is 10 images in there. And then I'm using the background footage, which is the random choice from that path. So this will pick a random file from the list that will come from the directory. Next one. I want to set my switch randomly. So I'm using the switch node, which I'm querying here. It's which, which, proper, which property, and then I'm setting it to random integer or random number between zero and two, but only whole integer numbers will be used in this case. Next, I'm setting my data in points, which, is, which are these two guys. Again, this iterates through every single entry in our data, and it will pick the username and age that we design, divine, uh, that we defined over here. So that will set the data. So now that we modified the message of our um, input one and two, data input one and two, we can uh, set up the write node and create the output file name. So what I will do here is just generate the output file name. So I'm using a string here and then formatting it i'm using the count variable as the number of the file that will be created and the username and user age so this will be the file name then i'm setting or generating the path where the renders will go again i'm using my working path i'm going to my out folder renders and then i'm merging this file name to it and finally, I'm using my outmov MOV uh, node, which is the writer, write node, and I'm setting its file value to that of the file path MOV, and I'm adding the file extension to it. So once we have the file name ready, then we can save the script once it's done for further use, or we can just render it straight away. Uh, but I'm, I would like to save it. So for that, I will create a script name in a similar fashion to the file name. But in this case, it's a nuke file. So the same thing, I'm using the count as the number of the string of the script, then the input one and two, the username and the user age. That all gets saved into the scripts directory. And finally, I'll save the script and I override it in case already exists. Uh, then I would like to append it to my script list, but in this case, we are not going to be using this. So when I'm done with this, I will tell Nuke to render our MOV directly. Now this is optional. Uh, you can use frame servers to render JPEGs, for example. Uh, you can submit this to render file management software. You can render it through command line. There are many options. In this case, I'm going to render it directly within the instance of Nuke that I'm running. And once the script is rendered, I will close it. And then the loop starts over for the next item inside of our list. So this is just one of many ways to accomplish something like this. Of course, this can be extended much further um, based on whatever database you're using. How are you going to be rendering? But uh, hopefully this will give you just a, a glimpse into the way uh, you can automatically process data through Nuke and automate these processes. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.